Okay, you've got a cool remix you've been working on. Why don't we take a listen to a little bit of it? Yeah, I mean, it's the Earth and Stars uh, demo session that's been around since uh, we introduced Pro Tools 11. Thought we'd have a little fun with it, kind of take the vocal and, and maybe kind of reinterpret some things and do a little something different with it. So this is what we've got so far. So you can see it's a little bit more aggressive, not quite so bouncy, poppy sounding. So, uh, so the first thing we want to do is decide, okay, what tracks out of this project do we want to share uh, with our collaboration partner? Sure, because you've got some virtual instruments, you've got MIDI, you've got audio. Yeah, I've got a lot of different things going on here. Now, I don't necessarily want to share all of the raw tracks. I mean, for what I wanted from, from you, Tom, since it's the, the guitars and the bass parts, I mean, you basically just need some what we would consider stem tracks mm -hmm. to kind of play along with. Mm -hmm. Now, with the session set up where I've got kind of all the different food groups of the instruments going through their own subgroup boxes, just happening live right now. And we've added some really cool new tools, starting with 12.3 with the new commit feature and then 12.4 with freeze, that basically allow us to take tracks and render them down, put the processing in place, either as a new track or as a placeholder on the exact track that it is. And that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna actually select the drums, uh, the keyboards, and the vocal tracks, and we're gonna right click on those uh, with due to selected invoked. And we're gonna freeze those auxes. And basically what it's gonna do now is it's gonna go through in faster than real time, and it's gonna render everything that's going through those auxes down as a rendered audio file but on that aux track. What that's gonna allow me to do once that's finished is I can then share those auxes with the rendered audio plus select the other subgroup auxes, so basically the guitar and the bass and the submaster aux that you'll have that you'll be playing through. Um, all those things can be then shared at one time and you'll have kind of some starting point to be able to to hear what those guitar and bass parts need to be done. So I've selected all those. We're gonna, once again, uh, do the selected, and now we're gonna start to share. Now if we bring up our task manager, you'll actually start to see that all of that is now uh, uploading into the cloud. Um, obviously some tracks faster than others because they were just auxes, but then we've got the, the rendered uh, frozen tracks that are now uploading all the, the audio media that's on those, and uh, it's gonna go start pushing that all up to the cloud. Now, uh, on your system, Tom, if you actually brought up your task manager, that uh, it's already starting, because you're associated with the project, it's already starting to see that uh, information that's going up into the cloud. You're actually seeing that activity as well in your task manager. So once all that finishes uh, on my end, and then it finishes on your end, then uh, you should be able to then be able to download those tracks into your project over on your system. So this is actually happening in the background. I could be doing other stuff. Absolutely. Setting up. In fact, let's go ahead and do that right now. Let's bring in my blank tracks right. of my guitar and bass. And we'll use import session data to do that. So we'll go ahead quickly here um, and we'll go to the desktop and I have my template ready to go. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just quickly select these as new track for all three. Again, these are my plugins, my routing, all the, all the way I like to work with bass and guitar tracks. I'm just gonna bring that into the, the project. And uh, there we go. All my stuff's ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my bass. Sure, okay. And you're using the, the Avid Pro Tools Quartet as your interface, right? Yeah, so this is my DI into Pro Tools, that's correct, and my, and my monitor section. So the task manager is done. Yes. And uh, we're ready to download all new tracks. So I just hit that one single button, and here we go. It restores all the tracks, and I can see your frozen auxes ready to go. And uh, now my routing should be complete on my bass. And uh, we've got all my plugins. We're ready to go, and I'm ready to record this bass part. Awesome. So uh, we'll go ahead and let you do that, and then um, check back in in a minute. That's right. All right. So we just recorded the bass part, and as you can see, Gil, I'm a one take guy. It's perfectly uh, ready to go. Awesome. I'm gonna take it out of record, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit that same button you were talking about, which is 
the single track collab button. Right. And you'll notice the state plate turned green and my task manager is now uploading that bass part as we speak. So while that's going, I'm gonna go over there and grab the guitar and we'll get ready to record the guitar part for you. Awesome, so uh, we're downloading and uh, we'll come back as soon as this thing gets uploaded. All right, so now that uh, Tom's uploaded that part uh, to the cloud, task manager's all cleared out, now I can come over here and click the download new tracks button and we'll download that bass part into our project on my side. So um, we look here, there's the bass part. I wanna go ahead and move this up to where, uh, up here near where my synth bass is and uh, play a little bit and uh, hear what we got. So you can hear that bass part kind of helps uh, kind of fill out that synth bass. It's uh, you get the nice punchiness of the synth bass, but that, uh, that the real bass part just kind of helps fill all that in. So that's awesome. So uh, we've got that. And uh, so I think Tom is actually ready to cut a guitar part. That's right. So I got my Les Paul here. Got my sound ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cut this part, Gil, and when we come back, I'll, I'll be uploading that part, and maybe you can make some changes on the bass part. Absolutely. All right, Gil, I went ahead and recorded the main guitar rhythm part, and I added a little fill part as well, so I'm gonna go ahead and share both of those tracks with you. Okay. That's gonna start uploading. I understand you've been trying out some stuff on the bass. Yeah, so um, you used the new 11 Mark II killer guitar amp simulation plugin, but with the new Mark II version that just came out recently, we've now got bass amps in here too, which is awesome. Yeah. So um, I've been kind of playing around with some, some of the settings and stuff. I actually want to come down here. I'm going to change the microphone from a 57. I'm going to go ahead and change that to the condenser, condenser U67. I'm going to take off the speaker breakup and maybe take off a little bit of the enhanced low end. Yeah, now you'll, you'll notice on my screen that because Gil is actually editing that track, uh, the state plate is red with his name. That means you're taking control of it, right? That's right, and on my end, it's got my name with the state plate in green, plus I've also got a green upload arrow. So I can basically come over here and click the upload arrow on just that track, and it will start to upload just those changes. Okay. Now, because this is not really sending any audio, it's essentially just sending volume or plug-in changes that you did. You can see on my side, it lights up very quickly, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit download, and if you watch the plug-in, you should see those knobs change. I could see that you changed the, the microphone, you brought the speaker break up, and the U-low switch is down as well. That's right. Um, one more thing I do wanna change on the bass part is, I mean, you had a, a good little fade out there, but I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and add an actual fade file to make sure it kind of fades down into nothing. And I'm gonna go ahead and push that change over as well. So you okay. should be able to, uh, once, once that comes over, you should be able to grab that change. Okay, and, I can uh, see it's downloading. And within a second or so, I get the download. I'm gonna go ahead and click that, and now I got your new fade part. Right, so I can also see up here at the top that I've got new tracks to download. I guess those are those guitars that you did. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let's click download new tracks. Um, brings uh, those guitar parts in down here at the bottom. Uh, let's go ahead and, and drag those up near the bass parts, kind of keep our session nice and tidy. And all the routing should match your auxes, correct? That's right, because we had actually shared those all those auxes earlier, and, and you've been using um, the, that busing structure. Now, one thing to mention is that I had originally shared the drums and the keyboard and the the vocal aux frozen, and that gave you basically those stems. But I still want to be able to hear that in on my side in real time. So basically, I, what I've done is I've actually unfrozen them over here. So basically, I'm back to using real time, uh, real time through uh, auxiliary uh, buses. So I'm actually hearing everything uh, as while I'm mixing through it, but you still have access to the stems because I haven't shared those changes over. Cool, let's cool. check out the guitar parts. All right, here we go. That's nice. Oh. 
That's one of the new models on 11 Mark II. Wow, that is a really, really great sound of plug. I mean, it was great before, but now with all these new models and things, it really does take it to a whole nother level. All right, so you can see we're kind of taking this and, and we're making it a little more aggressive, uh, a little more rock oriented. I think what the next thing I'd like to do actually is maybe create some more movement. I mean, we've kind of taken that piano part and kind of made it pulsing, but I think we'd be some really cool to do some loops and maybe some loop treatment to this. And one of the coolest guys that I know that does that is our buddy Jeff in, in Madison. So uh, what we want to do now is we're going to basically uh, see if we can't uh, get him uh, on a Skype chat. Um, one of the nice things is eventually we would like to have AV chat in um, our artist chat window. It's not going to be available in version one, but there's a lot of really great off-the-shelf um, audio and video uh, chat programs out there, FaceTime, Skype. We're going to use Skype. All right, so uh, we're ready to dial in Jeff here. We're going to get him on Skype, and we're also going to add him as a third collaborator, which, you know, if you were doing this over Dropbox and email and trying to combine sessions, it could get really messy. Absolutely, really quick. So we're gonna go up here to the Add Collaborator button on the edit page, and we're gonna click that. It's gonna bring up our artist chat and basically bring up our list of, of connected collaborators. Uh, Jeff's screen name is uh, Radcliffe Road. So I'm gonna go ahead and select him, and we'll go ahead and, and add him as a collaborator uh, to the project. Now uh, we're gonna go ahead and, and, and switch over to Skype, and let's get him on uh, Skype chat. Hey, Jeff, how's it going, man? Hey, how you doing? Hey, is it cold out there in Wisconsin? Dude, it's always cold. <laughs> hey, listen, um, I just sent you an invitation to collaborate on a project that Tom and I have been working on. It's okay. the Earth of the Stars uh, track uh, from Kelly Malone. Uh, we've kind of basically taking it and we're doing more of an aggressive kind of rock alternative thing to it. Okay. And we've... Uh, Basically added, uh, changed the drums around, done some things to the keyboard parts. Um, Tom's added some guitars and some bass to it. We're in a really good place, but we really want to kind of take it to the next level. And uh, we, you know, with basically with your percussion chops and, and what you do with kind of sound design treatment and things, I think it'd be really cool if, if maybe you could come up with a, a really cool kind of percolating uh, percussion part or any kind of suggestions that you might have. Cool. Yeah. Well, I can try some. Uh, I can try some different uh, tambourines or shakers or different types of percussion. See what works and uh, throw some ideas back at you. All right. That's great. So I'll go ahead and let you um, join the the project, download everything, and get to work on something. And we'll uh, check back with you with you on text chat here in a bit. Okay. Sounds great. All right. Thanks, man. Cool. So just to be clear, Gil. You didn't share any new tracks with Jeff, but he's going to get all the tracks that are already shared. That's right. So basically everything that we've pushed on both my side and your side up to the project in the cloud, when he goes and downloads that project, he will get all those tracks. Okay. Let's check back with him in a few minutes. All right. Awesome. All right. So uh, Jeff's actually sent us a text. And we can see in your task manager that you've actually started to receive it uh, as a download, even though even as he's uploading it, right? Yep, that's right. So uh, basically, we've got the download happening now. Uh, all right, so we've got uh, looks like we've got Jeff's tambourine track down uh, now. Let's go ahead and move that up with the rest of my percussive elements here uh, in the uh, session. So it looks like he sent you an audio file with a kind of a bit in the beginning and in the end, right? Yeah, so let's take a listen to and see what we kind of have there for a second. That's actually really cool. He's, uh, it's a tambourine track, but it looks like he's got some really cool treatment on it. Now, think about it, though. It looks like uh, it, it's like over the entire intro, and it looks like it's going over the entire chorus. I'm going to bring up the, uh, the actual chat window. And let's go ahead and ask him to maybe do some edits to the part that he's already done. So right now he's got the loop going all the way through 
both the intro and the chorus. So maybe if he would maybe do some edits to that, maybe kind of clean up some of that, uh, that would uh, kind of help. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to send this text chat over to him, and let's see what he comes up with. All right, so Jeff's responding. He's going to work on it, and then so basically uh, he'll do some edits, and then as soon as those edits are done, he'll uh, push some changes over to us, and uh, we'll see what we got. All right, we've got some uh, changes coming over in the task window now. And our download arrow is uh, turned green on the track, so let's click that and see what we've got. All right, so yeah, so now it looks like uh, we've got the changes. It basically looks like he has gone through and kind of split those uh, parts in half, both in the intro and the chorus. And he's actually done a really cool thing. Instead of deleting these clips, he basically muted them out, so at any given time we can always go back unmute things and use them as we need to. Yeah, so really um, a great overview of the power of collaboration inside of Pro Tools, totally integrated, all the file management's being handled, and you were able to make changes, really subtle things, whether it's a plugin setting, a volume setting, an edit, a fade, and those types of back and forth couldn't happen with email and Dropbox type import session data workflows. Not really. It's, it, it would have been really, really difficult to, to be able to kind of keep up with those things and make sure that, especially with multiple collaborators and being able to merge all that data and keep it all straight. All right, so we hope that this uh, overview of Pro Tools Cloud Collaboration has been helpful and let's see you online and collaborating soon. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks.